Hey, Abhishek, how are you? Uh, sir, I'm fine. Thank you, okay. sir. Okay, perfect. So, Abhishek, first of all, tell me something about yourself. Okay. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, my name is Abhishek Anand. Uh, so, first of all, uh, good evening to give me an opportunity to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Abhishek Anand. I am from Bhagalpur, Bihar. I am a self-motivated, energetic young man who is uh, very loyal about his profession. Recently, I was working in uh, Mahindra's Education Private Limited uh, in Bhagalpur branch as a GS Faculty of Physics. Uh, here, I worked for six months. And uh, here, my uh, main job responsibility was to complete the entire syllabus of physics in 12 separate batch, uh, batches uh, within the six months of duration only. So I executed this task very perfectly and uh, completed it within the given deadline. With the help of other team members, I also developed a culture to take an extra uh, additional uh, doubt session classes after completion of every topic. And uh, this uh, step made a great uh, impact among the students. And they are getting benefited by it right now. So. So as I told you, here I worked for six, uh, six months only because it was a contract basis job. And, uh, but I have around two years of teaching experience uh, officially. And if I talk about an official experience in, in the same field, then I have around six years of teaching experience. And uh, if I talk about my education, I have completed engineering uh, from uh, Durgapur, West Bengal in electronics and communication department. And uh, I also represented Bihar in Eastern India Science Fair. So it was uh, an interstate science exhibition. And here I represented Bihar among 14 states and got a special prize. And uh, if I talk about my family, sir, uh, we are a small family. Uh, my father is a government employee. My mother is a housewife. I have a sibling and she is younger than me. Uh, I like to play cricket. This is my hobby. <laughs> and uh, uh, so teaching is my uh, passion uh, since I'm involved in this profession uh, since my teenage. And I want to make my passion my profession, sir. Uh, I want to be a, a well-known person in the field of teaching physics after five years. And I think Badu is the great uh, platform for me. So, you know, uh, if, uh, if I talk about... Uh, my experiences, so whatever I learned uh, in last six to eight years in the field of teaching, that experience, my ma uh, my mindset, my passion, and uh, my education, all these things will give uh, an will give an extra edge to my to my company where I would be as a teacher, and it will also uh, help the company to generate more revenue in the competitive marketplace. Uh, since you are a a tech leader in this industry and uh, getting an opportunity to work with you is always prestigious for me. So that's all That's all about me, sir. Uh, thank you. Okay, perfect. Okay, good. Okay. So Abhishek, I have two questions from your intro. The first question is, as you mentioned, you have done BTEC. So after BTEC, you have multiple options in market. Multiple companies give you options to work with them, to have a specific job with them. Multiple IT companies give you chances then why do you want to come in teaching? And if you want to come in teaching, then why have you wasted your four years in BTEC? Uh, sir, actually, I did BTEC for my backup, sir. And if I talk about, uh, very frankly, sir, sir, in BTEC, I learned one thing. Uh, an engineer has a mindset to uh, generate new ideas, to uh, generate new technologies and new things. And so nowadays, uh, where uh, teaching is at its next level, sir, because... Uh, if I talk about uh, from five years or 10 years back, then that time uh, only one way of teaching was there. That is the conventional way, that is offline coaching. But nowadays, sir, online uh, teaching market is on at its, its high. So I think uh, as being an engineer, I have an idea, I, I have a mindset to evolve new ideas. And uh, teaching is my passion. So I think my, my mindset of... Uh, my engineering background and my passion will give an extra. Answer. That's why after BTEC, I want to be a teacher. 
Okay. But don't you think, Abhishek, if you might have done BCom and after that you might have prepared for CTET, UPTET, then you might have done good in teaching field because those are specific courses of uh, teaching and teachers. Don't you think that would be a great option for you? Yes, yeah, sir. It, it may be. It was. And I think it is, sir. But uh, I think, sir, uh, being an engineer, I have some extra knowledge of technology, sir. And I am, uh, I am very, uh, I can very uh, handily use that technology with, uh, with, uh, with the, uh, with this type, uh, this time of education or uh, the educational, uh, what we can say, sir, sorry. <laughs> I'm not able to express myself here right now. Okay. No worries. But I'll tell you, there are few teachers in India who have not done BTEC, but still they are doing very good. Like if you take the example of Mr. Khan, sir, of Patna, Bihar, if you have heard about them. He has not done BTEC in any field, but today he is doing very great. He's teaching in good institute, like he has a own institute where he is teaching the students and he is famous, world famous all over the, across India or across the globe, I can say. But don't you think that doing BTEC is not a compulsation? Don't we learn much more things in BTEC that helps in teaching? Uh, sir, I think whatever I learned in BTEC, uh, there I, I learned one thing, sir. That is the, uh, how will you express things in a practical manner? And if I talk about my conventional, uh, our conventional uh, way of teaching, there that is lacking, sir. The practicality is very lacking in our conventional method of teaching. And BTEC is giving me this opportunity to how to connect practical things with uh, with students so that they can concept uh, they can get their concept very clear. I agree. So, Your point is completely valid. I agree with that point. But I am saying that there are multiple teachers who have not done BTEC, but still they are doing good. How? I want the answer of this. Uh, sir, because sir, because teaching, uh, sir, uh, teaching is an art, and uh, it doesn't mean that you uh, you have an a degree to express your art. So, like Khan sir and other teachers, uh, they have very good art to express themselves, and that's why they are they are not uh, from engineering background, but they are but they are doing well. But it doesn't mean that sir, uh, a course can uh, uh, shape your career. Okay. I think your passion can shape your career. Perfect. Got your point. My next question to you is from your intro that you mentioned that your father is a government employee. So that doesn't give you a motivation to prepare for government examination. There are multiple examinations in which you can do good. As you are good in teaching uh, also, you have good educational background also. Uh, sir, actually, uh, as, as I told you, uh, yes, it motivates me. But uh, in government sector, there are only conventional way of teaching. Sir, I told you my passion, teaching is my passion. And uh, if I take the government uh, sector for teaching, it means I I will be a government teacher and there there is no uh, uh, there is a lacking of technology, sir, first thing. And second thing, if I demand those technologies from the government, it is very hard to get those things. But in online, sir, in online teaching, I can explore myself in a better way because here we have platform and we have a lot of students connected with us. So that's why I am I want to explore my abilities with the private sector only, sir. Okay, perfect. Got your point. Okay. So in that case, first of all, tell me what do you know about Baijus? Uh, sir, Baijus is the India's leader in ATEC marketplace. And uh, it is founded in 2011, 2011, uh, founded by uh, Bajuz Ravindran and uh, uh, Ankita Gopinathan, I hope. Divya Gopinathan, okay, go ahead. Div, Div, Divya Gopinathan, sir. Yes. Go ahead. And uh, it has a four point in its app. And it's had, it has, it has some various uh, segments like uh, Bajuz exam prep, like uh, and and uh, Baju's tuition center for uh, students. So there are various types of uh, applic uh, application. We can't say applications, sir. There are various types of uh, stages which Baju's provides to the students. It has around one point one fifteen millions of students with connected with Baju's right now. Okay, perfect. In that case, tell me a few features 
that are unique in Baiju's. Only Baiju's application have all those kind of features. Something unique. So Baiju's provides some uh, free classes also in its application, which you can assess by downloading its, its application. You have to uh, pay nothing for that. Second thing, sir, it provides uh, uh, one-to-one -one mentorship for students. If you go for values, uh, like uh, uh, if, if you paid for a course, then it, it will provide, uh, provide you an uh, end-to-end mentorship. And third thing, sir, Baju has a, a great platform where a great community of teachers are available. So from your doorstep, you are getting those uh, accessibility of teachers. These are some... Uh, Perfect. Okay. Good. Okay. So, Abhishek, next thing will be live demo section of the interview. So, whatever uh, topic you have prepared for live demo, you can just go to the board, give me a live demo on that topic. But remember one thing, you have to treat me a student of class 9th or 10th. Try to explain me each and everything in details. Okay? So, all the rest. Go ahead. Hi, guys. Uh, how are you? I hope you, are, you all are fine. Uh, today, in this live demo session, uh, we are going to learn about electricity. So before starting this topic, uh, we are going to uh, introduce this chapter, what we are going to learn actually. Uh, in this chapter, we will introduce, we will uh, learn about introduction of electricity, how electricity can be defined, uh, uh, property of charges, what is charge, and second, the concept of electric current. So let's get a start. So as I told, uh, what is electricity? Right, electricity, it comes from the word electra, electric and city. In simple word, if we take this five letters, electric, it means it is it is telling us about uh, like electron. Electron means electron. Just consider here electron means electron. So why electricity how electricity can be defined? Electricity can be defined as flow of charge or flow of electrons. Guys, before going to flow of electrons, I, I would like to ask a question. Tell me if electricity can be defined as flow of charge and we have two types of charges, positively charged particle proton and negatively charged particle electron. Then now you tell me why we are dealing with flow of electrons only, why we do not deal with flow of proton in electricity. Answer this question. We will take example of this structure. What is this? This is an atomic structure of an atom. So if it is an atomic structure of an atom, what we know about an atom? An atom consists of three types of particles, negatively charged particle, electron, positively charged particle, proton, and no charged particle, that is neutron. Guys, if you know, electrons are situated at the orbit of an, uh, of an atomic structure and are in moving condition and protons and neutrons are situated at its nucleus and are tightly bonded. Now, again, come to this point. What is electricity? Electricity can be defined as flow of charge. Not flow, flow, flow. Now, you tell me a charge which is tightly bonded at its nucleus can move freely or easily or a charge which is in its orbit and are already in moving condition can move freely or easily. Yes, you are right. A charge, a charge particle which uh, which is at its orbit and are in moving condition can move freely and easily as compared to the particles situated at its nucleus and are tightly bonded. And which type of charge is there? This is electron. That's why when we deal with flow of charge, we are dealing with flow of electron, flow of electron. And that's that's why in electricity we can introduce as flow of electrons also. Now, from this explanation, we learned that there are two types of charges, but what is charge? See here. Charge is nothing but a property of a matter by which a matter attracts or repels other matter. And this charge is denoted by Q. See, guys, tell me when a charge attracts and when a charge repels. You, I think, uh, you have uh, very familiar with magnet. What happens with magnet? Magnet have two types of pole. 
pole, uh, north pole and south pole. And what happens with those poles? If same light pole, like north pole and, no and north pole, placed near to each other, they repel to each other. And if opposite poles, like north pole and south pole, placed near to each other, they attract to each other. Same like magnet here, this charge acts. Okay, Abhishek. Perfect. That is done. Thank you. You'll have your seat. So now we will have next section of the interview that will be live question and answers. So I'll be asking questions from your domain, from your subject. So try to answer. But before asking questions from your subject, I have some basic questions to ask and then we'll move to subject section, academic section basically. Okay. So my first question to you is, how do you handle a lazy student? Suppose there's a student in your class who is very lazy for your subject only. He is doing good in mathematics, in biology, in chemistry, everything. But as we talk about physics, he becomes lazy. He don't want to study physics. He has no interest in physics. So how will you generate the interest in that student? What is your tactics? Uh, sir, uh, it's very simple. Uh, if a student is lazy and he is not taking interest, then first of all, I have to know why he is not taking interest in physics only. Because sir, physics is, is very interesting. And if you give a lifetime example, a, a real life example, then obviously that student will uh, take interest. And second thing, sir, if we give some task, uh, in class, I have taught something. And after that, I gave an extra task to that student. And uh, next day, I will try to uh, check either he has completed the, the task or not. If not, then I will ask why. And then I will, uh, in continuous manner, I will work on those that student and uh, one okay, day he perfect. will take interest. Perfect, good. Okay, so next question to you is, what are the characteristics or properties of an ideal teacher? Whom do you call an ideal teacher basically? Uh, sir, uh, to be an ideal teacher, teacher, first of all, you have to be a good listener. Okay. Second thing, sir, you have to be patient. If okay. you have patience, you are a good listener. And uh, if you are a great explainer, uh, if you can explain your ideas, your thoughts in a great manner, then you are a, you are a good uh, teacher. Perfect. Okay, good. So now it's time for academic questions. Try to answer maximum questions as per your knowledge. So my first question to you is, Define electromagnetic force. Uh, so electromagnetic force is a force which is uh, generated by the flow of electricity when this electricity is flowed uh, as, sir, in, in simple manner, when a magnet, when an, a metal, when a metal acts like a, as, acts like a magnet, after uh, the flow of electricity, then it is called electromagnetic. Okay. Or electromagnetism. Okay, that's all. Yes, sir. Okay. Next question to you is define Faraday's law. Uh, sir, Faraday's law. Not sure, sir. Right now. Not sure. Okay. Define electromagnetism. Uh, sir, electromagnetism. Sir, electromagnetism is uh, when electricity flows. Uh, through a metal, uh, a metal is bonded with electric wire and electric current is closed. Then that metal acts like a magnet and this is called electromagnet. Okay. That's all? Yes, sir. Okay. Next question is explain buoyancy. Valency. Buoyancy. Buoyancy. Okay. Buoyancy. Bion force. Buoyancy. It's a very common principle, buoyancy. We all have studied in class 10th, 11th. Multiple times we have studied. Just try to recall. Uh, no you idea. might get some clue. No idea? Not idea, sir. I can't. No, no idea. Okay, perfect. Explain me the working of transformers. How transformers work. Okay. Uh, sir, transformer works on mutual induction. Uh, and uh, there are two types of transformers. There are two two coils in transformer. In first type of coil, uh, the direct current, uh, I mean the electric current, is directly connected with the uh, high voltage or or high power source. And due to the uh, mutual induction, the second coil also gets some current. 
and this current is uh, distributed in our home. De depending upon the nature of uh, mutual induction, uh, transform transformer may be two types: uh, step up and step down. Step up transformer uh, increases the amount of uh, a value of electricity, and step down transformer decreases it. Okay. So what current do we use in our house for charging mobile phones or laptops? AC current or DC current? No, sir. Uh, in our house, we use AC current. AC current. In, every, yes, in everything, like uh, for charging mobile phones, laptops, for using any utensil, anything? Uh, sir, uh, no. Uh, charging laptop and, and other things like mobile, we need AC current. and. Uh, for sir, there are uh, for uh, running a fan, DC fan, or for uh, blinking a DC bulb, we need direct current also. Okay, perfect. Got your point. Take it. Next question to you is: Define me the induction motor. What are induction motors? So, uh, basically, motor is a device which generates electricity into mechanical energy, electric energy to mechanical energy. So in induction motor, when electric current is provided, it generates uh, mechanical uh, mechanical energy, uh, form of energy transfers. Uh, matlab, uh, yes, it it changes the form of energy from electricity to mechanical. Any example? Uh, Any real life example where we can see induction motors? Uh, sir, uh, in our home when we use. Uh, the motor to to fill up our tank. Okay. That is those are induction motors. Induction motors, yes, sir. Sure. Yes, sir. Sure. Okay. Define angular velocity. Uh, when a body is around is moving around a circular path and from any point of its of its circular path it takes the straight path then it it make it make an angle with the with its tangent and uh, the velocity towards that straight line is called angular velocity and define torque uh so torque in simple torque is uh, a force against the the gravity this is torque Against the, against the gravity. Uh, yes, sir. Against gravity is torque. So actually, okay. na, uh, a body, a torque is, is, is like something a body try to be in, in rigid position. And you are applying a force and a body is tried to be in rigid po uh, position. Then the force applied on that body uh, till that uh, the, the rigid position may change or not. The between this this uh, force is is known as torque, sir. Okay, sir. Define one radian. What is one radian? So right now I am skipping this one. Just skipping this one. Okay. So if we uh, see our image in front of a plane mirror, what kind of image we get from plane mirror? Uh, so plane mirror gives us gives us a uh, real. And uh, erected image, sir. Real and erect. Sure. Yes, sir. You think once again? I'm sure, sir. Uh, sure. Okay. And what about the car mirror? The mirrors which we have inside of cars? Uh, sir, this is a kind of concave mirror, and uh, it gives uh, it give, it gives sir sir uh I car mirror concave mirror gives us. A real and uh, and uh, dissipating image. Dissipating image. It's, oh, yes, sir. Dissipating image. What is dissipating uh, image? So dissipating image means uh, uh, the image size is lesser than its actual size, the actual object size. Got you. Okay. Next question to you is: Give me a relation between linear velocity and angular velocity. There is one formula, or you can say one thing. That relates linear velocity to angular velocity. What is that equation or formula? Not remember, sir. No idea. Hmm. Okay. Simple question. Define gravitation. Uh, so gravitation 
is a force which is uh, applied between any two bodies in the universe. And Sir? it is defined by G, capital G. Capital G. Okay. Define flux. Okay. Now, so flux is something, uh, sir, flux is associated with magnet or all those things which, which have a magnetic character. If uh, I talk about a, a magnet, then the flux will be known as magnetic flux. And if we talk about uh, an electric flux, then it will also uh, produce when electricity behaves like a, a magnet. So flux is uh, a line uh, generated by a line of force where that magnet is working. This is called kind of flux. Sir. And flux has the property uh, that is they do not intersect each other. Line of flux do not intersect each other. They are separated. Perfect. Explain solenoid. What is solenoid? Uh, so right now I'm skipping this one. I okay. know it's uh, but, but, but right now. If you want to recall, you can recall. No, so I think okay. uh, I will give. No worries. Uh, wrong. No worries. We'll skip it. We'll skip it as of now. Okay. What is lateral inversion? No idea, sir. No idea. You want to give it a try? Anything? Sir, I have read it, but uh, right now no, I'm not sure. Okay. Tell me the equation of motions. This question probably might be of class 6 or 7. Not more than that. We have read, we have derived these equations. There are three equations of motions. Try to record. You might get the equations. Also, oh, sir. Yes. So actually, I am revised. Okay. No. I am giving you a hint. You might relate from that hint. Equation of motions are those equations in which we have relation between initial velocity and final velocity. And then we derive three equations from that okay. perspective. So uh, then V is equal to ut plus half a t square. Great. Good. Go ahead. Uh, and uh, V is equal to U plus A T also. Okay. Two equations I got. Okay, I want one more. And uh, A is equal to B minus U by T. That's one thing. Okay, perfect. Okay. We have given two answers. That's okay. Okay. Define acceleration. Also, acceleration is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. That's all. Yes, any equation, any formula of uh, deriving yeah, equations yeah. or acceleration. So, so A is equal to A. Acceleration is, is denoted by a small a and a is given as uh, V minus U by T where uh, yes, where V uh, v is the initial velocity, u is the final velocity, and t is the time. So, okay, got you. Define angle of incidence. Uh, okay. uh, angle between the normal and the incident rays is known as angle of incidence, and it angle is given by reflection? i. Uh, angle of reflection is the angle between the normal and the reflected rays given by R. Suppose there is a plane mirror or there is a mirror in which the sun rays are falling. So after reflection, does temperature of sun rays increases or decreases or remains the same? What my question? Yes, sir. Oh. sir uh, temperature of a sun rays after sir, your poster is a sun ray is is falling on a mirror and it is getting reflected back. Then yeah, what yeah. what will be the temperature of uh, incident rays and the, the reflected rays? Ray. The reflected ray. Okay, so it will be same, sir. Sure. It will be same. Yes. So after reflection, there is no impact on the temperature or anything. 
Nothing? Uh, no, so temperature will not impact it. Okay, perfect. Okay. Define density. Uh, so density is the density can be defined as the uh, quantity of matter. Okay. Uh, if if a uh, matter has the more uh, particle or quantity, uh, then it may known as dense medium like water and air so air has a rare uh, air has a air is uh, rare dense than water okay perfect what is refractive index of air uh refractive index of air is one one yes okay perfect do you know about pascal principle pascal laws uh pascal laws sir right now i am not right sure. Okay, perfect. I have differentiate. Go ahead, no problem. So differentiate between heat and temperature. Again, a very basic question. Think of it. No, sir. Okay. Friction. Do you know what is friction? Yes, sir. Uh, friction is a force applied between two bodies. Uh, where uh, uh, bodies, uh, where a force which is applied on a body and other body uh, applied the opposite force. And uh, due to this force, a uh, frictional force, this the force which is applied by the another body is known as the uh, frictional force. Okay. So frictional, frictional force is always applied uh, against the applied force on a body. Perfect. Okay. Good. Okay. So, Abhishek, now I'll have few more questions to you. First of all, tell me what salary do we expect from Baijus in this particular position? Uh, sir, I, as I know, Baijus uh, offers uh, great uh, job opportunities along with great uh, economic uh, support. So, I think uh, around 3.6 minimum. 3.6. Okay. Perfect. Suppose if I don't shortlist you today for this particular job role, then what backup plans do you have? Uh, sir, I know after 90 days, I will again uh, apply in badges. So, uh, so until all, three uh, months, what will you do? Sir, in between three months, where I, I am lacking, I will work on that. And again, I will apply. And in between three months, I can take uh, uh, free classes on YouTube. So that I can revise my skills. So can I? And that is my plan, sir. Okay. Suppose if in Baijus we have bond culture and we try to bond you for three years with Baijus in this particular job role, are you comfortable signing a bond? Uh, yeah, sure. Sir, uh, to sign a bond with Baijus, I have no uh, problem because I know uh, after three years, I will get enough opportunity in Baijus. And in between three years, since Bajus provide a very healthy uh, environment to its employees. So in three years, I will also get some increment. So no issue, sir. Okay. So Abhishek, I think the interview is done here and now we'll head to our feedback session. Okay.